So today we're going to be talking about processors. What is a processor? A processor is basically the brains of any computer, be it a computer like a desktop, a laptop, a mobile phone, whatever it is. So processor is basically the brains of any system. So uh, we're gonna talk about the, the main construction of a processor first. So um, uh, the main uh, thing that the, the building block of a processor is a transistor. Um, I'm not gonna go too deep in, uh, into transistors because it's way too complicated for uh, a lot of people to understand. We just strive for like, uh, for everyone to understand uh, any topic as much as they can. So basically there are two types of transistors, basically three types, but uh, the most common ones are like uh, bipolar junction transistors, also known as BGTs, which has three pins, base, collector, emitter. So base is basically, uh, the you basically provide a small current at the base and this uh, current starts to flow through this so this is how a BGT works and this is uh, a FET let me just so this is a BGT transistor and this is an FET FET uh, known like FET for short so what this transistor is like it has a gate and a drain and source pin so you basically provide a small voltage over here. Uh, basically, you provide some voltage over here and the current flows from drain to source. And this is how you control it. And there's another type, IGBT, in case you're interested. Uh, you could also search for that uh, on the internet as well. So for now, we're gonna stick to that. So basically, a uh, processor used this transistor type, FETs. Basically, it uses FETs. FETs, why you may ask? The, the, the thing with FETs is that they're very efficient. Why they're efficient? Because um, our portable gadgets run on batteries and we need to maximize the battery life as much as we can. The transistor, uh, the uh, BJT is also like you could also work with BJTs, but the problem with B BJTs is that uh, it requires some current that needs to. Uh, enable transistor uh, on a small level, uh, let's say one, two, three, five, or ten transistor, uh, small current would not be a problem. But we are talking about billions of transistors uh, that is like, for example, even if it's in uh, like microamps or nanoamps of current, it's still a lot at that level. So, what do we do? We use a gate, uh, like we use a uh, FET transistor. A FET transistor, basically, we provide some voltage over here. Uh, current starts to flow uh, over here. And this is how we control a FET. So basically, this transistor works as uh, a capacitor. So uh, the gate is charged and then the drain to source uh, current flows. And this is how, like, with the, small, with the voltage, uh, um, not much energy is wasted. Of course, this is not ideal. We do require some gate current as well, but and that's very low uh, compared to a BJT. So that's why we use uh, FET in uh, in processors because it's very efficient and it can be scaled to uh, like it can be scaled as well because you, you know how small a processor is, and we were talking about billions of transistors fitting in in the small size. For example, this one. This is obviously a very old processor uh, this is an intel pentium m processor and uh, this one uh, has a clock speed of 1.6 gigahertz and of course this is a very uh, old processor and the clock speed is not up to the mark comparing to like uh, today's standards because we're talking about not a single core processor we're talking about multi-core processors uh, and the clock speed stays uh, around this one. But what is the difference? Why do we need uh, uh, multiple core processors? Like we could increase the clock speed of a processor to let's say three gigahertz. Uh, like they're already in the market, three gigahertz, four gigahertz, five gigahertz. Couldn't we uh, increase the, like, the clock speed to like, 
you could say uh, 10 gigahertz or even more well we could uh, we like it is uh, not difficult but the problem with that uh, if the frequency increases the battery consumption of a gadget increases so coming to multi-core processors uh, how multi-core processor is efficient than a single core processor so for example you have uh, let's see let's take a real life example like for example you have four things to do you uh, task one person to do that uh, uh, four things and on the other hand you uh, you task the same thing like uh, you distribute them equally the four tasks like four persons like one two three four to four persons who would do it uh, efficiently by efficiently i mean more like uh, more quickly of course the uh, the task assigned to four people so this is how a multi core processor works like the uh, basically uh, whatever command you give to a computer it is divided in, into instructions and then instructions are executed and they are divided into like uh, in that level uh, so uh, the instructions uh, are executed more quickly than a single core processor and one thing uh, we sh you should keep in mind that uh, for example your co your processor is uh, 2.5 gigahertz quad core a quad core means four processors or 2.5 gigahertz octa core like eight processors so it does not mean that for example if it's 2.5 gigahertz quad core it is equal to 10 gigahertz it's not it is still 2.5 gigahertz four core processor uh, as I explained, there are four uh, independent cores, they do not add up, it is for 2.5 gigahertz. So this is how it works. As I mentioned about the uh, batteries, uh, like uh, the, uh, the power consumption, the power consumption is reduced drastically and we are getting more and more performance out of the processors. And of course, in the processor from generation to generation, uh, the architecture is very important how the instructions are executed and uh, all uh, how the instructions are executed in which way uh, and uh, like uh, they're like the chip makers are constantly trying to uh, to make a chip as efficient as possible and of course they're uh, like uh, shrinking down the size as well and nowadays uh, uh, we are going towards a new era of quantum computing uh, and I'll talk about quantum computing maybe in some other video but for now let's wrap up the video and I hope you learned something and uh, helped you understand uh, although I tried to make it as simple as possible but maybe it was a little uh, over the top so yeah and I hope you liked the video if so, then like, share and subscribe and click on the notification bell and I'll guess I'll see you in the next one. Peace.